So hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Amesy's Corner. How you all doing out there? So uh, yeah, back to work, back to work. Time to get the uh, update going on the old Volkswagen wagon here. We, uh, this is the wagon that we put the cylinder head gasket because it was leaking coolant into number two. Uh, cylinder two right here was getting coolant in it, causing it to uh, misfire on startup and set the check engine light off. So we, we put a head gasket, we sent the head out to uh, the machine shop. They said they checked it very thoroughly and it was a good head. They machined the, uh, the mating surfaces like you should every time you do a head gasket. And we put the thing together and it started doing exactly the same thing, filling up number two with coolant and setting the check engine light. So we sent the head back and they checked it a little harder and they found a crack in cylinder number two exhaust right where I kind of predicted it was. We saw the, the evidence of coolant leaking there. So it took a little while to get another head with it. We got the head inside. We'll take a look at it in a little bit once we push this thing in. But I want to touch on, a lot of people ask me how I keep hardware organized, how I know where all the hardware goes in a job like this when it's been apart for what? two and a half three weeks now and uh, what helps is uh, is grouping I call it grouping my hardware I'll use like a little tray like this and uh, so I know that these are the intake manifold bolts exhaust to turbo man manifold the turbo bolts this is all the uh, exhaust manifold the head valve cover bolts and all that so I keep them keep track just keep everything really organized sometimes I'll keep certain hardware that's kind of special to a certain part like here the secondary air injection uh, change over valve I just keep the screws in it that way I don't have to remember or think about it but just keep everything clean and organized these uh these graze box I don't know if anybody's heard these my my old lady will have a subscription to the graze box the overpriced little snacks they send you but I uh I get some worth out of the little containers so yeah why don't we uh let me push this thing in and uh we'll go over all the new parts and set you guys up on a time lapse and put this thing together hopefully for the last time <laughs> all right guys we got this all pushed in all set up on the lift ready to go Did a little minor cleanup of the uh, cylinder here or the, the block here just got a little more cleanup to do there got the uh, the old time lapse camera set up under my lightsaber bar this is my uh, snap on micro lithium light you guys have been asking about one of these days I need to do a new uh, a new toolbox tour show off the new box and all the new uh the new equipment in it it's been a long time but just been so darn busy here we got the uh the cylinder head now like we had said it was cracked right in the valve seat the exhaust valve seat right in there um machine shop missed it their first time around so they kind of produced this new head here which is a new casting not a reman head but with the uh, with all the running parts from the original head you can see that's never been run before so yeah let's uh
All right, guys, she's all done, back together. There it is, looking just like it did when we started. So uh, I'd like to say that it went together smooth and started it up and it ran without any trouble, but, uh, but it didn't. That wasn't necessarily the case. I figured I'd push it to the door and start it at the door because I didn't want to smoke the shop up. And uh, as soon as I started it, it dumped all its oil right out of the back of the cylinder head. Um, I was like, oh man, oh man. I mean, not only was it a mess to clean up, it's, uh, it's where's the oil coming from on the head. Well, it seems when the machine shop gave us the new casting, it's slightly different in the area of an oil galley plug on the back of the head back here. Uh, either it wasn't in the old head or they didn't swap that plug to this new head. And I had no way to know. I had no way to know. So when I started it up, I just, you know, shot all the oil out. It was great. Cleaned that up. But luckily it was not a big deal to fix. I just found a, uh, what was it? An M10 by 125 pitch bolt. Put some sealer and a copper crush gasket on it. Bolted it in the back and uh, it's good to go now. It's good to go. So yeah, let's see. Uh, it's been sitting since the first start. I've yet to go on my road test, so. Yeah, starts right up. Sounds good, just the normal little uh, overhead valve noises. Nothing untoward, nothing that I'm really worried about. No leaks, no nothing. No. So yeah, why don't we go for a ride around the block on this thing's first road test and hopefully nothing uh, Nothing goes wrong on that. I've had about enough of this car in trouble. This being the second time I've had to do this because the machine shop messed up that first head on us. They didn't find the crack. So anyways, why don't we uh, we'll go for a little drive. We'll talk about that. Uh, well, all right, time for that road test. So what I like to do whenever I do any kind of repair, especially major repairs, but pretty much even minor repairs, I have just an inexpensive little, uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, code scanner here. I think I paid like $40 for it. But it has uh, a readiness monitor where it will tell me if uh, a pending code is going to happen or if any check engine light is going to come on before it even sets the light. And I like to plug this thing in just to make sure that everything's okay and, and right and tight under there as far as uh, what's going to set a check engine light like misfires or sensors unplugged that maybe got misplugging them in or damage you never know so first thing I want to check make sure it runs nice and smooth and seems to you got three monitors out of one two three four five six seven eight eight monitored things uh oxygen sensor is monitored the oxygen sensor heater is a separate monitor the cat efficiency is a monitor misfire and fuel and evap and secondary air injection so i don't think we're going to get evap and secondary air injection today those things require a cold start oh, runs pretty well runs pretty well like no pending codes good to go so anyways yeah if you guys have any questions or comments leave them down in the section I read every comment I might not have time to answer them all but I like them thumbs up and much appreciated and on that note guys I gotta get in I got a lot more cars to fix and until next time keep it out of the cabbage